Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 16 of Ruled Waves. This episode is going to be a special episode. We are going to design our first proper dreadnought, our first BB class uh, ship. And I thought I could take the chance to elaborate a bit more on uh, how I design my ships and especially uh, my decision-making process on how I get to the conclusions how to build these ships and what makes sense to me. So basically, uh, my decision-making process is mainly a two-part process in this case. Maybe a third optional, less important part is included in that too. Number one is I have a look at enemy ships. I already made some notes on a piece of paper here. Uh, so I can look up the different values while we are constructing the ship. But I basically look up the one ship that I think is currently uh, the heaviest or the best competition worldwide. So in this case, I looked up uh, the Brits in the Almanac, had a look at their ships, and they just recently commissioned the Repulse, which is quite a strong dreadnought. 6 14 inch guns uh, that's quite some armament and i basically take that as a baseline for me so how would i need to design a ship that is supposed to take it up with this ship in a worst case scenario i also uh, put these gun data these uh, gun values into the ship designer already and had a look at the penetration values now keep in mind that uh, I'm not sure if the penetration values that I see in the designer already calculate in my uh, my state of technology, and our state of technology is certainly not the same as uh, the Brits have, but still it gives us a rough idea how well these guns will perform. Currently, the worst that can happen to our belt armor is uh, that we face this ship on 8,000, I think it's yards or meters in this game. I'm not quite sure what the uh, range unit here is. I think, let's assume it's meters, uh, and you can correct me if you want to. Uh, 8,000 meters distance is the worst case scenario for the belt armor. In that case, these guns uh, would penetrate 12.3 inches of armor. The worst case scenario for our deck armor is uh, a distance of 15,000 meters. In this case, we would get plunging fire, and uh, the 14 inch shells could penetrate 2.1 inch of deck armor. So, as you remember, we are currently uh, using ships that have 4 inches of deck armor. I haven't had a look at the penetration values back then when I designed our old pre dreadnoughts, but what we can conclude from this is that our old pre dreadnoughts might be a bit too heavy. When it comes to deck armor, we are basically wasting uh, weight, wasting displacement that we could have used for a long time on other parts of the ship, since 14-inch guns uh, are just now surfacing. And back then, when we designed our old Berlin or even Hamburg class um, pre-dreadnoughts, we didn't have the problem of 14-inch guns. So this is something we have to uh, keep in mind: 12.3-inch belt armor and 2.1-inch of deck armor. Now this ship also has a whole bunch of um, secondary guns, especially 6-inch guns in that case. The armor uh, is a 9.5 inch belt armor. I wrote that down too, so later when we um, design the ship and have a look at the penetration values, this is something we should keep in mind and we should definitely be able to penetrate. I'm also not sure if this ship has deck armor at all, to be honest. Uh, it, it doesn't show up in this armor section here. I can just assume that it has, uh, but that the deck armor is not being displayed due to some espionage, fog of war type of mechanism in the game. We also don't see the fire control systems, which is also sad in my eyes. I mean, uh, if we click on our ships, we see a fire control system display in the, uh, in the bottom left but not in this case. We also don't see if this ship is using any torpedo protection. Then again, maybe the torpedo protection shows up later in the game once the enemy ships start fielding actual uh, torpedo protection. Right? Maybe it just doesn't show up because they don't have any. I don't know. Anyhow, our torpedoes are pretty bad, uh, but which is another topic. I mean, we are using 12-inch torpedoes at the moment. Other nations are already using 18-inch torpedoes. 
but then it does matter too much. Now, this is uh, uh, the first step of our uh, decision-making process when it comes to designing new ships. Let's assume our future dreadnought has to take it up against uh, this repulse class dreadnought, which is a very modern ship. Okay, uh, this will be the baseline. Uh, the other factor, the other big factor, is not the enemy ships. The other factor is uh, our own situation. Where do we come from? Do we actually need a new ship? If so, what kind of new ship do we need? And what do our old ships look like? So how can we make a new ship that is different enough from our old ship that is that it justifies building a new ship? So basically, I want the uh, the cost of opportunity to be as low as possible because otherwise we could just just be using our old ships or building one more old dreadnought or pre dreadnought. Otherwise, we could try to upgrade our older ships, rebuild them. But I think we agree that we definitely need new ones. We define the uh, demand that we currently have, the need to build a new uh, Dreadnought basically by the combat experience that we drew from uh, from being in battles currently with French. And you remember that one of our Dreadnoughts, pre-Dreadnoughts, was sunk by a torpedo. So we definitely want to have torpedo protection on the new ship. That is a must-have. That is basically one of the new advancements we have to implement. So I will write that down here on my piece of paper too. TP for torpedo protection, so I don't forget it. So having a look at our old ships, or old designs, let's say the Berlin class, which is our most modern uh, pre-dreadnought, our most modern capital ship and heaviest capital ship we have, we already see that um, our guns, our armament, is definitely not sufficient. 12-inch guns have been already uh, the standard back when we started the game and we didn't have the chance to build anything bigger. If you remember, we had the chance to build either 10-inch guns with zero quality or we could build 11-inch guns uh, with minus one quality. Now we are advanced enough to build 14-inch guns. The, the same guns basically that other nations are building currently too. Our 14-inch guns have a minus one quality at the moment, but I hope that we can rebuild these guns uh, at some point of the fu uh, in the future. At some point in the future. 13-inch guns, our 13-inch guns, currently have minus one quality too, so it doesn't make much sense to uh, use these. What you see uh, in the Berlin class, that it is 21 knots fast. I will make a plus here on my piece of paper because 21 knots is pretty fast. Other ships, other capital ships are currently 20 knots fast most of the time. So this is nothing where we have um, a big need at the moment. We have 11 inch belt armor. This is something that should ring a bell. Now we said 12.3 inch is something that can be penetrated by 14 inch guns. Uh, so I will circle that in here and put a minus next to it. This is something we have to address. Uh, we talked about the armament already. Okay, we'll uh, make a minus here too. Now we have a, f a four inch of deck armor. This is definitely something we have to address too. Probably we'll, we will reduce it to three inch. So we can address the penetration value of 14 inch guns on 15,000 meters. And then we have a few other um, values here that I won't go into the detail too much. We also have two fire control positions on the ship. I would like to see, though it is not a priority in my eyes, a third one. So we have another redundant position. Because remember that at the beginning of the game we said that our premises, our whole shipbuilding philosophy is that we want to have heavy hitting, long range, very precise artillery. Uh, so I think a third fire control position would fit very much into the, this uh, theme. Based on this evaluation, I will now prioritize different aspects of shipbuilding. I will write down P1 for priority one and write down A, B, G, B, standing for all big gun design. That's what I want to have. I want one big main gun battery and I will no longer uh, want to have a very big uh, secondary battery like 8-inch guns in a secondary battery. The secondary battery and maybe even tertiary battery 
will now only be supposed to be uh, against uh, destroyers and other smaller ships, but the main combat power from this ship will be derived from the main battery and nothing else. So we want to have an all big gun design and I will put into parenthesis 14 inch. We'll see how many we can fit on uh, the ship. Eight would be adequate. And minus, I will I will write that down too. Uh, this is addressing the armament. So let's also put down torpedo protection, which is definitely a must-have too, priority one. And I want to increase belt armor. That is something we definitely have to address in the new ship design. Let me think if there's anything I am missing at the moment. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, let's uh, write down P2 for less important priorities. Um, P2 would be something like speed. An additional knot would be nice, but it's not a must-have. I would put a parenthesis 22 to 23 knots. Oops. <coughs> uh, I would also like to address... Actually, we should also put a lot of armor on the turrets. I will put turret armor also under P1. P2. Speed, uh, a third fire control position. And let me think, what else? What else? Let's have a look at our at my first step here. So that's why we are basically trying to systemize our decision making process. So I can make a step back now, have a look at the uh, threat analysis, at the analysis own situation, and so on and so forth. Uh, da, 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 turrets, we talked about that already. I think that's it. That's it. We will have a look, we will need to have a look at the penetration values in a second, so we can definitely penetrate 9.5 inch armor, but I think that, that won't be a problem. Okay, let's dive into the ship designer. We want to have a dreadnought, so we have a ship type BB class name. We will call it Poison Prussia. Uh, we will obviously build it locally. We will up the displacement to 26,000 tons of displacement. We will first of all set the speed to 21 knots. So basically what we will do now is we will put in all our number one priorities, leave everything else at the same old level. I think that makes sense. And if we have some tons of displacement left, we will adjust our design. So 21 knots speed. Uh, we'll leave the engine priority to normal at the moment. The belt is not going to be interesting. So we said 12.3 inches can be penetrated at a range of 8,000 meters. So let's go with 13 inch. Bell coverage is supposed to be normal. I'm not too sure about the um, extended and, yeah, basically the extended portion of the ship. I honestly have no idea how important that actually is. We will definitely need to protect it in some way, but certainly not with a 13 inch. Let's let's do the deck first, three inch, because we said that we want to no that's deck extended, because we said that we want to protect ourselves from uh, from two point one inches of penetration. Actually, the three inches here did weigh too much, eight hundred and twenty six tons. That can be well, that can be economical. Let's put it to zero now first. Let's do the rest. Uh, before we do luxury things, let's just put to zero for now. Also, the belt extended, conning tower. Um, we said that 
Our old ships have 10 inch cutting tower armor. Probably we should set this one here to 13 inch too. Shouldn't weigh too much. 359 tons, that's all right. The turrets are going to be interesting now. Um, let's set them to the same armor, uh, armor protection than the rest of the ship. So turret tops to three inch, turrets to 13 inch. Uh, this can be very heavy once we uh, put in the put in the actual guns. So uh, the game currently doesn't show us any weight for this. I'm not sure about the secondary armament anyway. Let's take two inches for now. Two inches are enough in the game, as far as I know, to protect uh, the secondary battery from shrapnels and other kinds of secondary damage, except for, um, for direct hits. We have a, a slope deck that's perfectly fine. I don't think we can build the flat deck on top of belt anyway, so slope deck will be just fine. We definitely take torpedo protection level one. The accommodation should remain normal. No colonial services for this ship. Now it's getting interesting. So. As far as I remember, we can now build some sort of superimposed turret. But I'm not sure which one. Let's have a look. We definitely want to have double turrets. And we want to have four turrets in a best case scenario. So we can have a total of eight guns in the end. In that case, we would have two more guns than the repulse class. And that would be worth a lot. So forward and aft turrets, definitely. I think we can have a midship turret, and I think it was an aft superimposed turret. Oh, okay, we can only build a maximum of three centerline turrets. Oh, I think we can build the superimposed turrets, but another tag is currently hindering us from uh, building four, four main turrets or four centerline turrets. So what will happen now is we will build a cross-deck fire design uh, trapnel. Clear turrets, yep. Cross-deck fire. So if you remember, cross-deck fire means that we will arrange turrets on opposing sides of the ship and they are able to fire across the deck, hence cross-deck fire. So we will have the forward and aft turret. And now I have to think which, which of these turrets, which of these gun positions were the ones uh, that you need for cross-deck firing. Uh, it should be yep that's it that's it our ship weights a lot already uh, so we have to have a look at that later but for now let's just uh, keep designing the ship we will definitely need much more ammo Let's say 140 rounds, 150. We want to have three fire control positions with central firing. We haven't talked about the secondary guns. We definitely don't want to have torpedo tubes. We can use a very small secondary battery. We probably need it. Uh, for at least destroyer defense. Actually, we should talk in the next video about uh, fleet doctrine and how, how our fleet composition in the future should look like. Because what it looks like currently is that our dreadnoughts, at least this dreadnought, might be not very good at holding itself up against destroyer rushes. So maybe we want to design a light cruiser class that is specifically designed to fend off destroyers and to escort uh, this kind of dreadnought. But that's a topic for another video. Let's assume we will have 10 4-inch guns, so 5 guns on each side. In turrets. And that should be it for the moment. Now we have a problem. We are about 100 tons too heavy and we don't even have extended armor. 
and we definitely need that. So let's for now set the deck extend armor to two inches. It's a hell of a big ship. Two inches. And the belt extend armor. I'm not sure how much that weight weights uh, quite a bit. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot of weight we have to get rid of. We could make it a short range ship for use in our home waters only. Uh, but that would be. Uh, I'm not sure if we might want to fight against the US in the next war. To get holdings, uh, hold of a few oil sources. We could make it cramped accommodation. Not sure how much weight we're actually saving with that, not much. Could also, prioritize the engine for speed. Take only 20 knots? Nah. We're still way too heavy. Okay, since since we plan to keep our distance. Why not take off a bit of um, the belt armor? And in that case, I mean, we're supposed to, to stay as far away as we can anyway, since we want to plunge fire too. So we can maybe have 12 or 11 inch, inches of armor on the belt anyway. Let's try and see what happens in armor. Yeah, we're still 1,000 tons to heavy. Yeah, let's have a look at our priority two. So the FCP, the fire control position, we said we might want to have three in this case. Now we said, okay, we cut that priority down to two. Hopefully that's enough also. Now we are still 900 tons too heavy. Uh, 11 inches belt armor. Let's take that for the moment. Let's also go down to 4 inches of extended armor. Eleven point five inches of cunning tower armor. I really want to I really don't want to take off any armor of the turrets because if they blow off or blow up, that that's just the worst case scenario. I definitely won't take away the torpedo defense. Still 600 tons. Still 600 tons. Twelve inch turret armor. So they can penetrate them by 0 0.3 inches on ideal range. Which will be eight thousand meters. Mm. Three hundred and twenty tons. Where do we get the three hundred and twenty tons from? Just 
just hypothetically, yeah. I want to have a few, a few secondary guns, definitely. Okay, just out of curiosity, nothing else in the way except for the weight at the moment. Damn. We'll basically just need one more tech level in machinery or armor or something that is reducing uh, the overall weight of some of these elements by 1%. That's all we would need. All we would need. We'll definitely not take an older fire control system that weights less because we set our premises to build a very heavy hitting and precisely hitting ship. We could go down by another knot that will make it a slow dreadnought, slower than the dreadnoughts of other nations. What if we go down to two and a half inches of turret top armor? That should still be enough to prevent 2.1 inches of penetration. And, ooh, that's a tough choice now. How much extended armor do we have, by the way, on our old ships? I'd be curious about that. Let's go down here to two and a half inches too, and now we are in, in the black numbers. Well, that's good news. So, and the deck armor should be just fine still. As I said, 2.1 inches of penetration on 15,000 meters distance. I'm not very happy with the belt armor. Uh, we should really look out to not get too close to any other ships with uh, 14 inch guns. It's a shame this game has no uh, line of sight or distance uh, tool while in combat. That would be very, very helpful. But apart from that, this seems to be just fine. I'm, I'm still currently considering where to put the 600 uh, tons now. Oh, not the 600 tons, the 270 tons. We can put the accommodation on normal now. Uh, 150 rounds sounds just fine per gun, that's, that's all right. We can now put the third fire control position on the ship. I'm not sure about the belt armor, maybe we can... Yeah. So let's take the cramped accommodation and another half inch of belt armor. So this ship is supposed to operate between a distance of 15,000 and 8,000 meters against other ships with a 14 inch uh, armament. And it's still, I mean, an advancement considering that we had 11 inches on our old ship design. Now we're at 11.5 while at the same time extending the armor in the in the areas that we actually needed it and that is definitely the deck armor and the deck armor is at 2.5 uh, likewise on the turret tops and that should be that should be enough that should be enough against 14 inch guns at least for now i'm not quite sure about the uh, technology level of the other nations i hope i'm not miscalculating here anything or misread any of these uh, tables Let's have a look at the gun data. So in this case, uh, we would be just fine against the uh, British 
repulse class in terms of armor penetration. So we could penetrate there uh, nine and a half inches of belt armor pretty much on, on every distance that is below 15,000 meters. Starting from 15,000 meters, we can penetrate them. And we can also penetrate uh, just as much as they can in terms of deck armor. Again, I don't know if this is already factoring in technology and uh, all these other kinds of uh, factors that come into play when talking about armor penetration. I think that's it. I think that's our new uh, class. But no worries, I will, I will put some uh, nice, nice things to look at on the ship. Also, not quite sure... How it should look though. Something like this. No? Come on. There we go. Looks like it is moving this way now. So let's delete this one. Not the funnel, but I would like to redraw this one here. Yeah. Whew, that's it. Uh, this will be our, I hope, our entry ticket into the Great Power concert. Whew. That was that was difficult. I'm not too happy with the secondary gun battery. Not too happy with the belt armor, but it should be enough. It should be fine. We have 49 tons left. Having a look at my sheet of paper, I'm wondering if we can, if we can find another half an inch of turret armor. How heavy would that be? Oh. No. That's it. Twelve inches inches for our turrets, and that has to be enough. But then again, we pack a whole lot of punch, and if we're lucky enough, we uh, wipe out any threat fast enough anyway. And that's the whole purpose of the ship. So let's check it one last time. Cramped accommodation, I know. Maybe we can actually... No. No. Save it. Okay. Yes, let's go to the build dialog. And it's... <laughs> Uh, freakishly expensive. 86 million. Well, okay. We're currently making 2.6 million a month. 5.4 million Reismark in development cost. And there we go. We designed this ship. We made it. Okay, so let's hit the turn button one last time, because I would like to know if we started an arms race uh, by building this kind of ship. Seriously. So the private shipbuilding just expanded. <laughs> well, let's uh, call that very bad timing. Sorry for our sailors that have to endure cramped accommodation now. Well, that's just bad luck. The French invasion of Senegal has been defeated. The intelligence service is considering offering safe passage for a revolutionary of some renown to his home country, France. This will foment if revolution and may force them to the negotiation table. On the other hand, re 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 <coughs> revolutions tend to be contagious. 
What do you recommend? Hmm, good question. Currently our unrest level is at 1. Let's see what he can do. Let's give him safe passage. And we have a re research breakthrough in fire control. We are now having plotting tables. New torpedo technology. We sink a ship. Our armored cruiser Leipzig is intercepting another French raider. Let's fight the battle. We haven't seen any action in this episode. Let's fight the battle. I'm wondering uh, if the sound settings are properly calibrated. Can't find the game here again. I will just yeah, I will just put down or turn down overall volume a bit more. Nope. Let's just play. There we go. It's trying to get away. So it's quite late already. This ship seems to have some combustion problems or something. Not sure. Trying to catch up with the light cruiser. Identifying the light cruiser. Oh, come on. I would like to have a look at the class. So it seems to be just as fast as our armored cruiser. Obviously much lighter armored and much lighter armed. And we're opening fire. The light cruiser is trying to zigzag away. Causing a few hits, but as you can see, it's getting darker already. And it's gone. Crew speed, ultra fast game speed, and waiting for the scenario to be over.
Okay, light damage doesn't really matter. Getting a few victory points. Okay, that's it. That was episode 16, constructing a new Dreadnought, actually our first Dreadnought. I'm quite, I'm quite happy with what we did today. So thanks again for tuning in. I hope to see you next time. We're having about uh, 30 or 50 people per video watching this. And that's already something that I find highly interesting and uh, that makes me happy. And as long as we are just, I don't know, five, two or three people, I don't care, uh, we can continue the series. So uh, see you next time. Mm -hmm.